Number 18 is a quadratic inequality that we're going to solve. And the first thing to do on a quadratic inequality when solving is to pretend it's a quadratic equation. So if this were a quadratic equation, you would set it equal to 0 and then solve, right? So we're going to subtract 18, subtract 18. We're going to rewrite this thing. It says 3x squared plus 3x minus 18 is uh, less than 0. But we're pretending it's an equal sign, so we're just going to write it as an equal sign for now. OK, so we're going to solve this quadratic equation. You could use the quadratic formula. And I think I will, or unless, I don't know. Maybe we could factor it and then split it and solve it. So how could we factor this, uh, this part of it? And let's start by factoring. It might not be able to be, to be factored, uh, but I could see that we could pull out the GCF of 3. So if we pull out the GCF of 3, what would be left on the inside of the parentheses? Well, you would have x squared plus 1x minus 9. No, minus 6. I'm sorry, minus 6. Oof. So uh, we've factored out a 3. And now the question is, if I look at the inside right here, am I able to factor that red quadratic trinomial that has the a value of 1 because I already factored out a 3? And the answer is yes. I could factor it, put an x right here and an x right there, and then simply think, what times what is my c value of negative 6 that if I combine together is my b value of positive 1? And that will be a positive 3 times negative 2, right? A positive 3 and a negative 2. If you don't see that clearly, go ahead and make a list of all the multiples of your c value, negative 6. It's either negative 1 times 6 or negative 2 times 3. And when you combine those, it gives you 5. This is not a 5. When you combine those, it gives you 1. That's a 1. This is the pair of numbers that you want. So we're going to put that negative 2 right in there and the positive 3 right in there. Now, assuming it's an equation, well, then you have your 3 out here times that stuff equaling 0. Well, you could do whatever you want to an equation. You don't want this times 3. Go ahead and divide by 3. Cancels out. Divide by 3. 0 divided by 3 is still 0. So you, you, what you really have is x minus 2 times x plus 3 equals 0. And of course, with the 0 product property, we can split them and solve. If you have something times something equals 0, the first something, x minus 2, that could equal 0. Or the second something, x plus 3, that could also equal 0. And when you solve both of these, you will get the answers x equals 2, right? Plus 2, plus 2. x equals 2. And also the answer, negative 3. x equals negative 3. Um, so if it were an equation, those would be our two answers, and that would be it. However. This is not an equation, it's an inequality. So that was step one of solving an in a quadratic inequality. You pretend it's an equation, you get your answers. If it's not factorable, then you could use a quadratic formula, and it should give you the same exact two answers, x equals 2 and x equals negative 3. But there's two more steps on solving quadratic inequalities. The next step is to plot your answers on a number line okay, and test values. So we're going to do a number line. We're going to put the negative 3 over here, the positive 2 over here. And obviously, 0 is somewhere right here in the middle. OK, so let's test some areas here. I could test the area or the value 0 and see if it's an answer. And if it is an answer, it looks like my answers are going to be in between the values of negative 3 and positive 2. So how am I going to test the value of 0? I'm going to go back to the original and test 0 by plugging in 0 for x, 0 for x. The whole thing will become 0. So the question is, is 0 less than 18? And the answer is yes. 0 is less than 18. So by testing 0, I know it works. That means that all of the answers in between the negative 3 and the 2 will work. Okay. Now, because this is an inequality without a solid line underneath it, in other words, it's not or equal to, you cannot include the values negative 3 or 2, but this is our area. OK, so step one was to pretend it's an equation, solve it, get your two answers. Step two, plot your answers on a number line and test the values. 
That way you'll know if the inequality is a compound inequality written together with the x in the middle or separate with the word or. So if the areas would, if you tested the zero and it didn't work and you test values out here and they do work, then the areas would be apart with the word or between them. But because we tested zero and it worked, that means that all these areas work in between here and here. It's gonna be an answer that's a compound inequality, negative three, positive two, x in the middle, less than symbols, and they stay less than because they're open dots. The original was a less than, not less than or equal to, or uh, it didn't have an or equal to. So this is your final answer for this question. So it is rather lengthy. How do we solve, again, to, to reiterate our steps, how do we solve a quadratic inequality? Well, we first pretend it's a quadratic equation, set it equal to zero. You could use a quadratic formula if you want. I factored, split, and solved. I got my two answers. I put my two answers on a number line. I tested a point, and because they worked, that means that my answers are together. So that's why I did a compound inequality together. If I would have tested zero and it wouldn't have worked, then that means that my answers would have been apart. So I would have kept them apart with the word or between them, kind of like that, where, with the word or. But it's together, so my final answer is this guy right here. Let's try one more of these uh, quadratic inequalities that we need to solve. Same deal, let's get pretend it's an equation. Let's move everything to one side. I'm going to subtract 11x. I will have 3x squared minus 11x plus 6. And we're going to pretend it's an equal sign with a 0. So because our a value is 3, yes, it might be factorable by doing that multi-step process of a times c getting 18, thinking what times what is 18, which is actually negative 9 and negative 2. That'll give us a positive 18. That'll combine to give us the middle value, negative 11. And then you could change it to a four-term polynomial, which means you could use factoring by grouping. But instead of all that, I know a lot of us would rather prefer to use the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Now, whenever you use the quadratic formula, please identify your uh, a value, your b value, and your c value. And then please rewrite your quadratic formula, but with parentheses instead of the a, b's, and c's, just like I did there. Okay, so our b value is negative 11. Put a negative 11 there, a negative 11 there. Um, our a value is 3. Put a 3 right there and a 3 right there. And our c value is 6. Put a 6 right there. So let's begin by working on this discriminant. So we really have uh, 121, right? 11 squared is 121. And then we have minus 4 times 3, which is 12, times 6, which is 72. So we have 121 minus uh, 72, okay? And that is inside the square root value. So let me rewrite the whole thing here. We have a positive 11 plus or minus the square root of 121 take away 72 is actually 49, and that's beautiful because that's a perfect square number, and it is all divided by 6. So what we really have is 11 plus or minus 7 divided by 6, which is really 11 plus 7 divided by 6, and also 11 minus 7 divided by 6. So 11 plus 7 is 18. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 11 minus 7 is 4, and 4 divided by 6. You can't really do it, but you could reduce it to 2 thirds. So we have our two answers, three and also two thirds. Now that would be the answer if it were an equation, but we know it's not an equation, it's an inequality. So that's barely step one on the process of solving quadratic inequalities. Step two is to go to a number line, plot your values, your answers, which is two thirds. Uh, let me go put a two thirds right here and a three over here. Now. That would mean that one is right here. That would mean that zero is over here. Um, and we need to test some values to see where our answers are at, okay? So let's test. I guess we could test zero, which is on the outside. And if it doesn't work, then maybe the inside values work. Or we could test one, which is on the inside. And if it works, then you shade in the inside. If not, then it would be answers on the outside. It's totally up to you what values you wanna test. Or if you want to really be sure, you could test this value, this value, and of a value bigger than 3, and you'll see that it all works out. So I'm going to test the value of 0, okay? 
Test zero, which is clearly on the outside. Zero squared is zero, plus six is six. 11 times zero is zero. Six is greater than or equal to zero. So the zero did not, did work, which means that the answers are out here, okay? Now this did have an or equal to, so my answers, two thirds and three, they will be solid dots, solid dots. And we said that zero did work, which means that the answers are over there which must mean that the answers are over here. Don't believe me? Let's say you would have tested the value one, which is clearly between. I already know it's not gonna work because my answers are on the outside, not the inside. But let's show you the how one is not gonna work. Plug in one, one squared is one, three times one is three, three plus six is nine. So we have a nine on the left side. 11 times one is one. Nine, is it greater than or equal to 11? No, it doesn't work. So you see, when you test the value one, it doesn't work. So if you test the value zero, yes, it did work, right? If you test a value like four, it's gonna work. The answers are apart. Now, because the answers are apart, you're gonna have uh, your inequalities written separately with the word or between it. You're gonna have y is less than or equal to because the original one had the or equal to. Y is less than or equal to two thirds or y is greater than or equal to three. This is our answer and that's what we have right here. Wait, why did I write y? I should have written x. Sorry about that, not y. x is less than or equal to two-thirds, or x is greater than or equal to three. I don't know why I wrote y. We are on the x-axis on the x number line, so I should have written x. I apologize. But there's your answer.